Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. I hope you all are doing great. I am recording this video for the second time, so do watch it full. Cool. And today we are going to talk about the Netflix app, the Netflix homepage. The Netflix homepage is a personalized homepage. Everyone sees a different page. You will open, you will see different recommendations. Your friend will open, they will see different recommendation. And everybody has different interests. So according to that, Netflix displays you what you want to watch. Now this displaying of homepage poses a great problem for them because this loading used to take a lot of time. Now they did something to reduce this time so that they can actually display this content faster. Now they thought that they could, they could not, they did all the optimizations on the API front. Like they did everything they could do on the recommendations front, whatever they had done. Now it was time to do something on the network, the call which you are making. So it is like optimizing the road now. The destination and the source are there. You have to optimize the road. Now what happens is the Netflix has a huge network of content delivery which is used to cache their content, whatever videos you watch. Now suppose you want to watch a show which is coming up on Netflix. It comes, it is produced, it is cached on the devices and you can easily watch it. You don't have to make a call to the server because there are no edits happening. This is called static content. This content does not change. It is once produced and it is there. Now you can bring in this content directly from the CDN, CDN appliances and you don't have to call the servers. Now, where are these CDN appliances located? By the way, these CDN appliances are called the Open Connect appliances. These are located almost everywhere around the globe, wherever Netflix is present. They are mostly loaded near to the internet service providers so that you can easily access these. Now, let's think about this content, the home page which we are talking about. Now, in this home page, you are seeing different different types of recommendations and maybe different recommendations each time. One day you are watching Friends, one day you are watching something thriller. Now, what will you see? These all these recommendations, all the ML modeling, whatever it did was there. Now you have to see the recommendations on this page wherever you load it. Now, this content cannot be cached. This cannot be cached on these open connect appliances. This is not static content, this is a dynamic content. Now, how would you increase the speed to fetch this dynamic content? For this dynamic content, you have to make a call to the server, actual server, actual Netflix server, which is there. Now, these Netflix servers or data centers, they are located at just these three places around the globe. So think that so big, the Netflix network, over 200 million customers and the, the these servers are located at just three places around the globe. Now, suppose you are sitting in India, you have to make a call to the US to fetch your homepage. Now, this takes a lot of time. Now, how will you reduce this? Now, why does this take a lot of time? It is not like that the request is going on a flight that will take 24 hours. Still, the request travels to the internet and that also takes time. Now, how does that happen? To understand that, we need to understand the TCP handshake. Now, whenever you make the request, there is a TCP handshake between the client and the server. Now, what will client do? Client will make a call that I want to get this information. Server will send, send an acknowledgement back. Like, this is the, like, I acknowledge that you want, let's create this connection. And now you can, I will send the data which you requested over this connection. Now, as you see that first you set the request to create this connection, then an acknowledgement come. So this is a round trip from India to US, then from US to India on the network not in flight and this takes around 300 milliseconds. Now this is huge time. You want to reduce this. Now every time you load this page, you have to make this amount of time just to make a network call, which is like extreme, extremely huge. You want to reduce this. Now what did Netflix do? What they thought was that, that we have these CDNs all over the world. Why don't we utilize that in some way? So what did they do? They thought that let's allow the user to make a connection with this one of the CDN devices and this CDN would make a call to the server. Now you will think how is that different from the earlier way? It is just like A plus B like you are just making a call to the same thing but adding a node in between. 
how is that cheaper it should be more like it should take more time now let's try to understand this so when you would call, make a call to the cdm it is just this call to the cdm which is taking time now you create this handshake you this do this tcp handshake with the cdm instead of doing this with the server the cdm itself can directly be connected to the server at all times because there are millions of millions of users which are requesting some particular content it does not have to make a new call every time to the server create a tcp connection beforehand so whenever you make a request the cdm will make a call to the server to fetch whatever your personalized recommendations are and will give you the new tcp handshake is not required now this helps to reduce the time in theory but it is not tested now how will you test this in theory everything works in theory everything that you can prove it will work but you have to test it in software development software developer try pushing code without testing you will know what i mean you need testing so what did they do they created a testing framework now this framework is like extremely amazing framework which i think every app might have or like a version of it would or every app could have we will make a separate video on this to understand how this testing framework is deployed along with the app the netflix app you are using so you are also one of the testers but you don't know it so that's how the kind of test is so using this testing framework they try to check whether the time is reducing for the user or it is increasing so they deployed it and they found that for some users the time decreased but for some other users the time increased now how is this possible it should work right the theory was right but it is possible that the person is located closer to the server as compared to the cdn you don't have to make a call to the cdn every time now you have to make a decision either you would go with the cdn approach or you would directly make a call to the server now how will you do that now the simplest thing everyone would think that build another api just make a call right what's the big deal but you forgot the initial issue we were actually trying to reduce the time not increase it now you added another api it will take even more time now you have to reduce this that won't work you have to not include any api you have to do something very simple which does not has any complex logic and it should be able to route between the cdn call or directly to the server now what did netflix do they used dns to do this now to understand the complete dns framework how domain naming system works how you are able to visit a website for that we will make another video if you want that video comment down below i will make it now what happens is that in the dns there are a lot of different types of servers first comes the top level domain servers these are like .com .in .org different types then there comes the authoritative name servers these are the servers which are owned by the specific website now what does dns do it basically maps between the name for example netflix.com to a particular ip address or off the server to which you will be making a call so now what did they do they created a ip address for the cdn based calls and they already had the ip addresses for the server based calls now these authoritative name servers whenever the the, the dns system calls the authoritative authoritative name server to ask which what is the ip address for netflix dot now this authoritative name server would make a decision whether to give it the ip of the cdn or it will give the ip of directly the server but how will it make a decision that can be easily done because every user is kind of making the calls so they leverage their testing framework and kind of uh add aggregated this information in different authoritative name servers that people from this region whenever they call you have to route this to the server whenever this the people are making a call to cdm route it to the cdm now they this information can keep on changing because of different issues which might be occurring so they kept using the testing framework which is installed at the back end which you don't know like along with your app it is running all the time with using that they are able to guess or they are able to actually know that the cdm based approach will take lesser time or the server based approach will take a lesser time so what this simply did the authoritative name server it simply has the aggregated information it will make if statement that if uh, the user if cdm runs uh, faster it will make a call to that 
if the server based is slightly faster, it will make a call to the server. So that's how they helped decide, deciding where to actually get. Now they named this project the speed of faster than the speed of light, even though it's not true, but still they did not actually make any major considerable changes. They were able to leverage their existing CDN network to make your load time faster. Now you can also use this approach in whatever applications you are developing. You, you might be thinking that I don't have a CDN. I created an app. I don't have a CDN network. How will this benefit me? But you can see that what things people consider to actually reduce time. They consider the how much time is it taking, the TCP connection time, what kind of connection they are making. So these things you have to consider when everything that you have tried is not working. So I hope you like this video, like this video, share this video, share it with all of your friends. If you didn't understand the concept, then watch it again. If you still have some queries, ping me on LinkedIn, put the comments below and I'll see you in the next one.